You have to operate with intent on everything you do all the time, always. Whether you're playing drums on Broadway, or you're teching, or you're making coffee in the morning, you need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you can do it properly. You have to have intentions behind what you're doing. Welcome everybody to Nashville Drummers Podcast, episode 22. Today's guest is Thomas Finch, who is the owner of FDS Finch Drum Services. You may know him from his drum teching business here in Nashville. I think a common theme throughout this conversation is the idea of living with intent and being very purposeful. Thomas is very clearly someone that has defined his purpose and defined his intentions. What did you take away from this episode? First of all, that the dude's a mega homie and a mega pro. And he's intense. You kind of said it earlier when we were getting this set up. Man, yeah, he's intense. Like, yeah. Maybe it's part of the military background or how he grew up or what, like, but his energy, I really, really dig it. And so with that, we hope you enjoy episode 22 featuring Thomas Finch. This episode is sponsored by Music Lab Nashville. Thanks, Ben. All right. Well, welcome Thomas Finch to yeah. the podcast. So good oh, to have wow. you here. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it's like a, a true full circle moment. We were kind of talking beforehand because we thought this was your old room. It turns out it's probably not, right? But yours is one of these down the hall. Right next to it. Right next to it. Right next to it. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. So full circle, but not full circle. Not close. Circle. Yeah, it's good to be here at SIR. Oh. And Wait, wait. What? <laughs> Sorry. Got to break Sorry, it to Josh. you. I don't think this is your old room. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's... um. Like I said, when I walked in with Erica, we were walking to the back. I'm like, I know where Dan's room is. Got no cell phone service, but I can find him. Yep. I have no clue where I'm going anymore. Yeah. No yep. clue. Don't know which one's mine. Don't know what room is mine. <laughs> yeah, but it is, like you said, to your point, it is kind of a full circle because FDS started here yeah. in Diamond Sound. Yeah. Literally in the room right next to this. Work box was in the corner, just like you have yours. Yep. So yeah, walking in was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> That's cool. Does the universe bring me right back where this started yeah. for this podcast? It's such a surreal feeling. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And you, like, literally, the two of you are one of the first drummers. I feel like I say this at every interview, <laughs> but it's true. Like, the drummers that we've talked to is like pretty much have people I've met early on, which is pretty cool. Specifically, you two. Like, I met here at Diamond. Yeah, I mean, we met yeah. because you were looking for a room. I was looking for we a room. Thinking about as one splitting does. the yeah. space, and that's yeah. how you and I connected. Was that's right. Diamond Sound? That's yeah. not easy. And you were just yeah, you were room. so welcoming and just like super nice. So I appreciate that. I'm the best guy ever, dude. You really are. So you're. I mean, you are the first drum tech, you know, on the podcast. I, I mean, we probably had drummers that have maybe dabbled in drum teching, and you know, we know what that is. But for the non-drummers, I'm thinking of my sister, shout out to Rachel, who's an avid listener. People that don't know what a drum tech is, just give us the quick definition. What does a drum tech mean? Great question. And it can be answered so many different ways. But essentially, I'm the guy behind the drummer. I do all of the grunt work from unloading it from a trailer or a truck to pulling it out of cases, setting it up exactly the way they want it every single show. Besides the general stuff, cleaning, tuning, polishing, changing drum heads, like I have to be the one that can remain calm, cool, and collected in case all hell breaks loose on stage. Something snaps, a screw backs out, a cymbal straight falls off the drum set like it straight did when I was just out with Accept. Yeah. Homie hit the China symbol <laughs> and snapped the post. That and was the China went, symbol. Right? Wham! Hit his floor toms and he one swiped it off the drum. And I looked at the ground and went, that's not supposed to be here. Oh shit! That's not supposed to be here. <laughs> so, so you are running and so you got to react. Yeah. You have to react and analyze that situation in milliseconds time to come up with a solution, all without impacting what he's doing or what that performance is. Wow! So what I, what stand was that that broke? It was well. So Chris Williams, drummer for Accept, has an entire custom made rack a whole giant made rig and he's got two chinas that kind of approach from over top wow. so it was his right side he just paddy whacked it the post literally snapped off and good bam, lord and it just came down that's like a one yeah. you never hear of something like that that was my first experience yeah. <laughs> i mean i've had things go wrong but never had that yeah happen. so what yeah. was your fix yeah honestly he had a little little china underneath it all so i, I ran behind their amps their fake wall of amps yeah 
And I looked at it, and I'm like, okay, so the metal is sheared clear off. There's no gluing this. There's no fixing this. What do I do? So I looked at that other china, and I said, cool, I can take the post out of it and just slam it back into the clamp. Yeah. So that's what I did. I, I, un, I undid it. I pulled the china out. I took the whole entire symbol arm, slid it in, and just swapped the china symbols, and he had his china back. Beautiful. All within wow. what felt like forever, but it was probably just a couple of seconds, honestly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So being being a drum tech, it's like there's a there's a lot more than just You are a problem solver. You have to be. You yeah. have to be the mechanic for the drummer at all times. If mm-hmm. anything breaks, you have to know how to fix it. Yeah. You have to. Dude. Oh, I feel like and this is I'm really happy about this. Drum techs are getting just a little bit more love in this season, maybe because of that whole thing with Polyphia. Did you see the no. that whole debacle? They played that show, I can't remember what festival. The click cut out oh, for, that, that for well, actually, video. I think all, I have all seen of that. his mix oh. cut out for him. Yeah, and so, the guy yeah, yeah. the tech yeah. had had everything in his ears, just was going on his leg. Giving him live tempo. Keep, yeah. keep him right on time. I'm like, so my question insane. to all of that is why didn't he just give him his pack? I don't even know. Right. If, if he had mm-hmm. his ears, there, for in some for the reason it was wide. not an option. I don't know why. You see, that must be the only answer. Yeah, it, it has to yeah. be. Yeah, because I've I've actually heard that story so many times, and that was always the general. Why didn't he just give him his pack? Yeah, if he's <laughs> listening, why didn't he just unplug? Yeah, and be like here maybe you go. Maybe it's like the end of the song or something. Yeah, yeah. Or there has to thing. be more of a reason to or it. Or maybe yeah. it's all bullshit. <laughs> was it all lies? It's a conspiracy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. I'm not uh, saying it is. Yeah, no. So I know that that's the thing, but yeah, yeah, that in regards, that is exactly what you have to do. You need to be there for that guy. Yeah. And you would be surprised that a lot of times drummers, and there's no no throwing shade. It's, it's a thing. Yeah. A lot of drummers don't know their own gear. They know nothing about their gear. They don't know how to operate it, how to fix it. It's just, hey, you're the tech, you do it. Mm-hmm. So you have to be like super intelligent or very knowledgeable about your instrument about the materials, about what it's made of. Like, you have to be a nerd yeah. in order to perform your duties for the drummer. Because if the drummer knew it all, you would basically be useless. You wouldn't have a job. Him. You right. would just be the monkey setting it up and tearing it down. Yeah. yeah. Although, to be fair, that's a lot. It's a lot. Especially in the case of these guys with giant kits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I want to be hands off. I don't like, I would love to show up and just have my kit set up, tuned how I like, everything set up. At the distances I want. Oh, cool. it's a total luxury. It's like, a total luxury right? as yeah. a drummer to have a tech. It really yeah. is. Like even beyond, like you don't need to mess with my pedals. You don't need to like just. It's here. It's it's where. Even not having it tuned, just it's where I want it. And it's yeah, great. I, yeah. I had to carry very, nothing <laughs> yeah. already. That's a luxury nearly beyond my own imagining for my. For I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah. There's something to be said too for just like having that delegation, right? Like you have the drummer that's obviously focused on their specialty, their craft performing and the gig itself being with the band and then you have the techs and you know the roadies and everything and i just had a great idea yeah what and your next gig i'll just show up you and i'm your tech my, oh i I'm love that do it okay. man. just and just and then we're like what, well who, who's it like oh that's that's just my tech yeah yeah, yeah. don't even give my I have name. a gig yeah. tuesday at the end oh sick. we should do it at these small venues that like <laughs> totally unnecessary <Perfect. laughs> yeah anyway. i'll have like a print out a rider and everything <laughs> Oh my god! Like the, just, the the stage manager tries to help me with it. I'm like, no, 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 my text got it. What's on your rider? It's just a one page rider <laughs> with one. It just says yeah. eggs, sour patch kids. Yeah, yeah. the, the most an insane things you can put on there. Oh yeah, yeah, for Nate. What's the wildest thing you have seen or have been present to or privy to as far as your guys with a rider? As far as drum teching or uh, well, just be, crowd like, witnessing. Oh, definitely. what kind of wild things are we discussing? Oh, yeah, you, well, you have I, all I meant the stories. Specifically, sure. with an artist, you don't have to name names, but with. Oh, no. With an artist that you work with on their rider. Oh, what's on the rider? Oh, man. Honestly, I haven't seen anything wild on riders. I've tried to understand why someone would put certain things on riders, but there's never been, like, anything crazy, crazy, crazy. No one's ever, so far, no one's ever gone above and beyond for the most asinine things they could possibly put on there yet. Hmm. But you always get tons and tons of soda Tons and tons of beer, yeah. barely any water, yeah. never paper towels, never coffee pods. They never put Keurig or any type of coffee on the rider. It's always like bananas or peanuts, yeah. water, beer, liquor. Okay, well, bananas, I'm starting to understand. I just found out they're apparently a beta blocker. Huh. You maybe, know this? maybe. So, so, you that can, mean the- so that's like you have that and it keeps you from getting tense. 
Ah. I saw, do you know who DeAnthony Parker is? I do know, yes. Yeah, he was like the last guy to play with the Mars Volta before they did their thing. Oh, okay. And then he was playing for Bosnian Rainbows. He's a complete monster player. I saw him multiple times with, with Bosnian Rainbows, and he would play keys with his left hand, or with his right hand, which one hand, and play drums with the other limb. And he ate three bananas per set. Every time I saw him, he would eat three bananas during the set. Mm. So I was like, what's that about? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was beta blocker mm. stuff. Yeah, I wonder if that helps his performance and yeah. does all that. Yeah, probably does. He's a, he's a wild guy. So. so this dude was playing drums and eating a banana at the same time. He was. He wasn't just <laughs> slamming it in between songs. Well, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I just I just remember I saw three bananas and they were gone by the time the set was Everything over. about my brain right now is consumed by a dude playing drums just, yeah, just right? chowing on a banana. Yeah. 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 That'd be impressive. And then he adjusts his glasses and eats some sushi. Thank you, Benny Kelly. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what Benny does? That's the story of how Benny got his won his audition with Frank Zappa. He was eating oh my sushi. God, I didn't he was know that. eating Yeah, oh, this is my it's my favorite Benny story. He's like I mean, there, there are a lot of them. But Frank had handed him a piece of music that was really intense chart, and they said there was a lot of stuff between Kick and Tom's. And they said, Steve Vai is telling the story. It's like, at this time, he had a habit of pushing his glasses up with his middle finger. And he's in the middle of playing. He grabs a piece of sushi, puts it in his mouth, pushes his mouth up with his middle finger, and just keeps, never misses a beat. Frank grabbed the music and threw it. And that was the end. <laughs> there you oh go. my gosh. Okay. That's awesome. We're wow. done. A man that, that can story. flip you off, eat sushi yeah. and drum at the same time deserves the game. Vinny. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> hey, so Nate, Nate was a tech for Virgil. Really? Not yeah. Vinny, but but I remind him. Nice. But I did so with, frankly, not nearly the amount of knowledge or experience that I, I had no I had no fucking business being that guy's tech. <laughs> Yeah. But I was the tech. Thank you so much, Doesn't Josiah matter, Baker, man. for getting me on that gig. That was a life-changing experience. But I, as you were talking about, I'm like, I really was a novice going in there. So you bring up a good point, and not to, no insulting of yourself by no, me no. or by your own self, but there's a lot of people in this industry that have no business being here. Right. Yeah. In the teching world, whether you're a guitar tech or whatever, you see so much of that. Right. You're like, Why? And now, now I'm I'm voicing this out not because I'm being a jerk or I'm slandering anybody else. Like I'm, I'm in a safe space, and these are things yeah. in the industry that don't get talked about because you have to be professional. Right. Nobody wants to address them, but there's a lot of people out there that will agree that there's a lot of people that don't belong here, and it 100%. makes it really really difficult to work. You have to like babysit people. Mm. Now, how do you get experience if no one gives you a job? I get that. So sometimes you can't right, know the, everything. Yeah, but it's right. just like when you really don't have a singular clue about your job duties or your instrument, you have zero business being out here. Yeah. Because you have to be able to sit there and watch your guy do what he does. And you can't be helping the new guitar tech or helping the new drum tech do their job well, your dude's over here flailing out of water because something just failed, and now you're wiring an amp or trying right. to change a tube or do something else. Like, yeah, it's super, super stressful. And I, <laughs> I just feel like that has to be addressed in this. Why industry. do you think that is? Are you you're talking specifically about the tech world? There's guys that have been teching in this industry forever. But to your point, I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? And yeah. I feel like credit to you, like you, like when I first met you, like you were literally in the room here, like just getting your hands dirty. Yeah, and I just restoring had to, drums and doing everything. Right. My whole plan for the room was I have I wanted to conceptualize this idea, and I was like. Okay, nobody even knows I'm in town. Nobody knows who I am. Like, do I even have business being out here with this idea hmm. of starting this drum services business or getting into drum teching? Like, how does one do this? And this is the same conversation I have with everybody. There is no zip recruiter. There's no Indeed. There's no Google Jobs. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Yahoo a Yahoo job. LinkedIn You can't just for apply that, yeah. <laughs> for these jobs. So right. how do you get a job doing something that's basically on the black market yeah. job industry, right? How, yeah. do you, how do you do this? And as everybody already knows, and it's a common sense answer, it's the whole, it's not what you know. Who do you know? It's who. It's who you know. But then how do you know who the right people are to know, to get to where you have to go, right? This yeah. thing can spiral 
I mean, there's a lot. That was almost Dr. Seuss level yeah, in, in your little rhyme it, scheme there. But yeah. it's yeah. truth, though. There's yeah. truth behind it. Totally. Like, yeah. You have to know the right people. It's not just about being like, hey, I'm a drummer. I'm a tech. No. Well, do you think to that point, maybe that's why there's so many like unqualified people because right. it's just friends of musicians 100%. and probably players, right? And like yeah. a, a good hang, all that thing. But yeah. when it comes down to like the job of a drum tech and all the details the thing that you is, described, a lot of they're people not... want to do the job. A lot yeah. of people, even now, I'll get people that message me every time FDS needs somebody to clean mm. drums downtown or do churches or whatever the case may be. And there's no disrespect to them, but from as the business owner side of things, I have to look at resumes. I have to look and see, okay, are you going to be able to perform? Are you going to be able to do this? A lot of the times the answer is no. Mm. Like they say, oh, well, I can set up my kit. I can do all that. And it's like, okay, that's, that's good. Like, that's awesome. Not saying you don't how to do the job but do you have actual tech experience if i send you somewhere on any gig whether you're on the road teching for a band or you're teching downtown or even in a church if something breaks do you have the wherewithal to know that you have to turn a screwdriver left or right to fix that problem right a lot of guys have they don't know they really don't and that's okay it's okay if you don't know but it's like some people they want to do the job. They think there's glory behind it. You're yeah. cool. It's a bump up on the resume. But when they get down to the brass tacks and they realize how much work is involved and how tedious every little itty bitty thing can be, they're like, dude, nope. Yeah, not cut out. Yeah. We're not doing it. So, okay. So here's the question. How do you gain? What, what do you do with that person or what is your suggestion for that person to start getting that experience? Because that's like a yeah. very unique and like you like you can't have experience until you have experience kind of thing yeah well that kind of goes back to guys bringing their friends on tour that want to be a tech and they're trying to give them a chance yeah i hate to say this but for me and i think maybe for you guys like there's there's a level of natural ability mm -hmm. involved with some of the things that we do like some guys will play drums naturally they can they just can some guys can tech because it all makes sense to them. They never yeah. took a training course. They mm -hmm. didn't have, it's just, they're just problems. Something's solvers. leaning that shouldn't be leaning. Let's tape it. Let's right. fix it. Like sometimes the natural solutions just kind of come yeah. to get the experience in that. I almost feel like if you don't already have like a, a tinkering mentality to you, or you love to yeah. tinker with things and build things or find out what is, what makes something tick or work, you got no shot at doing this. Because then you just end up becoming the guy that just sets up the drums and then you're like, okay, cool. So yeah. it sounds like it's not even the drumming. It's that mindset of like how things work from yeah. a very like basic fundamental 100%. And problem solving, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Because the drumming like that can be taught and learned. Yeah. You, you, know can, I mean? like, you can take lessons to be a drummer. You a hundred percent can. Yeah. And yeah, you can have somebody like even me. I learn from other drum techs almost every single day. Yeah. Sometimes regular drummers on Instagram will be like, hey, I did this last time and this worked really well. And I look at that and go, oh, that actually, that's a really good idea. Like mm. I, I still learn things. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, unless you're willing to read a manual for Roland and know how their triggers work <laughs> right. and what wires yeah. and what the materials are made of, unless you're willing to like learn the schematics behind stuff or yeah. know how many teeth are inside of a, a joint for a cymbal stand, you, <laughs> you, you, you yeah. literally don't serve your yeah. drummer any additional value by being uneducated about your instrument. Yeah. Well, it's not yeah. just how many plies of wood do you have or what my snare is made out of. It goes way beyond that. Do you know the alloys and the percentages in your cymbals? Right. Do you have any idea that there's more than one type of triple flange hoop? Yeah. Do you understand the glue that's holding the wood together? Do you know what the finish is? Do you know what your lacquer is made of? Do you have any idea about your instrument? Because yeah. if something needs to be fixed, you You're the guy. are the guy. Yeah. You have to know or you're fired. Right. <laughs> Cue Donald Trump. Right. You have <laughs> Dude, like it's a it's a real love it. it's a mm -hmm. real thing, mm -hmm. and that's what I love about FDS because I get to learn every single day. Yeah, I have other drum techs in this industry that have straight up attacked me and tried to belittle me and put me down through social media, Whoa. just because guys are protective. Yeah, it, it literally is a black it's market cutthroat. thing. It is. It's yeah. cutthroat. It, it's coveted. Like it sounds really weird, but being a drum tech is like a coveted job and right. if these guys so much as feel threatened by a new guy coming in this industry they try to do whatever they can to push you out because right. it's job security mm -hmm. mm. 
it's job security because these dudes can even run circles around myself and other guys. Like they know so much, they're so intelligent and they're in the positions they're in because they've done that work, which makes me, it brings me to a point of what I wanted to bring up is like, even what we're doing now, this podcast, the people who are gonna be listening to this podcast, they're doing so and we're doing so with intent. Right. We have intent behind what we're doing. Usually. Usually, yeah. <laughs> but the, if yes. you do things on just autopilot mode, you you serve no purpose. Right. There's nothing that you're doing that's making a difference. You're you're doing it aimlessly. You have to operate with intent on in everything you do, all the time, always. I Whether you're that. playing yeah. drums on Broadway or you're teching or you're making coffee in the morning, you need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you can do it properly. You have to have intentions behind what you're doing. Mm, yeah, that's and a there's great too point. many guys out here that just autopilot yeah they don't pay any attention i mean look how many guys do we know on broadway we can walk down broadway and just scoff because there's so many people they're wearing pajamas they're wearing nothing that belongs on hey stage. don't make fun of mac loafers <laughs> like you, you know what i'm talking <laughs> about you, right doing yeah. the bare minimum is not enough right it's not enough especially in the city well yeah these days in a world where everyone is talented right? yeah you yeah. got to stand out somehow it's not enough to set up a drum kit it's not yeah. enough to tear down a drum kit and be like, cool, I did it in 17 minutes. I'm no. a drum tech. Go well, visit my new website. Like you gotta, yeah. to your point, have a really, and, and I wanna get into your starting a business and like moving to Nashville and, and all that. But yeah, having that intention and like strategy. Yeah, F- well. FDS and starting that was an intent. There was intent and reasons behind why I did it. Yeah, Everything you do has to have intent. I was, I was just thinking this was two weeks ago, I think I had, an experience playing a club and I came in and the drummer, this is talking about lack of intent, man. I came in and the drummer had their kit set up. When when you think of how a child sets up their drum kit, what picture happens in your brain? Nothing is where it's supposed to be. Right. Well, I think the of weird Tom weird Angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what yeah. it happened. I'm like, you just played a <laughs> four hour set, my guy. On my guy. <laughs> my guy. And you are an adult person <laughs> playing on professional level set of drums yeah set up like a child who just began playing would set was there was no thought mm-hmm. put into this zero intention 100 percent with you man you have to have intent have to have intent i don't care how many times i don't care what anybody takes away from this podcast or this conversation if you are not operating with intent in your everyday life you literally yeah, have forget you have forget nothing drumming to complain about career, as to why you don't like, have any success. Yeah. If you don't have intent behind your practicing or going downtown, oh man! If you find yourself just going through songs and going through the motions, just get up and leave the drum set. Stop yeah. right there. Let somebody else step up to the plate that has intent, that knows what they want to do. They're there for a reason. Yeah. Let that more dynamic guy get up there and play yeah. the way it's supposed to be played. Have intent. Yeah, you in all areas to. of your life, right? I mean relationships, you know, what you put in your body, what you eat. Yeah. Just a healthy way to be. It's intent. Like we all know Music City is cutthroat. Everybody will snake your gig from you. And there's so many people out here go, oh, that's not me. Okay, sure. (laughs) You are here with the same reasoning everybody else is here. You want the gig. You want to get paid to do what you like to do. Yeah. But do you have the intent behind what you're doing? Right. Or is it only, I just want to play drums. I just want to make the money. I just right. want to be on a big gig. That's not enough. Right. Well, it's like that bring it back to like what John was saying to us. We had a great talk uh, a little while ago with John Butterworth, and he was talking about people will take gigs that they don't even care about because they're just like, yeah, I just, I just want to play. Yeah. Like, yep. that's not enough. Dude, go practice in your room if you just want to play. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just like, I don't, I don't really like it, but I, you know, I could kind of use the money and but I'm like, you yep. know, leave it. Leave it for That's somebody it. who's like, no, I want that gig. It's right. I yeah. want that. Yeah. Leave it for yeah. someone. That I love has his intent. mindset. It's like you're yeah. in that situation, like you're stealing someone else's gig. Right. You know. Yep. That's really exactly what it is. Yeah. 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 That's that's a that's a lack of intent. Intent, and that is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so oh, let's go backwards man. a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I want to know where this drum nerdiness like started from. You know, and Ooh. like where, yeah, just like take us back to little Thomas and who that's a scary I mean, Were you a drummer time, like when you were a little kid? Like did that, you were always before we drums? go Before we go to that, it's important. Yeah. What was your nickname when you were a kid? It, wasn't, it wasn't little Thomas. Little, yeah. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, it could have been. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, man. No, I mean, grower, not a shower. <laughs> Finch has always been that the name. That will be edited out. It started like in school. 
we had like five, six Thomases in school, and I just remember one pinnacle moment. The teacher called Thomas, and six people popped like whack a mole. Whoop, everybody's head came up, and nope. she was like, "No, nah, we're, we're not, not doing, doing that." This. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we're not doing that. And Finch was it, and it's stuck ever since. Yeah. Well, thankfully, you have a pleasant last name. I forget I even have a first name, like a legal first name. Whoa. I forget because yeah. like. Finch is my name. That's who I am. It's my mm. persona. Yeah. There is no Thomas. It is. There is yeah. only Finch. There is only Finch. There is only Finch. <laughs> yeah. It. For real. <laughs> Even my best friends have known me my whole life. It's Finch or Finchy yeah. or Finchy Boy or whatever. Any yeah. any different Finchy way boy. you can spin it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Jared from Saving Able likes to go, Finch. Like it's some kind of fart or something. It's yeah, the like funniest that. thing in the world. <laughs> but it's, it's always Finch. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you say it. It's always Finch. I love it. Always. Okay. If somebody yeah. says, Thomas, I know you don't know me at all. Mm. <laughs> or you know me too well. We're not in friends, which case, yeah. I'll probably run from you. Right. But. Thomas. Yeah. So oh, the, God. So drumming, <laughs> drumming for, for you to answer your question, drumming was a thing that my dad did. He played in okay. southern country, southern rock bands all the time. And my introduction to it was sitting on a bar stool, you know, your legs can't touch, so they just kind of swing and you're just a little kid Yeah. in this smoky old bar where you could just see the cone of light because there's so much cigarette smoke inside the bar. And I would sit there and squint and try to watch what he was doing. And I would associate, cool, when he hits that, that makes this sound. Mm. When he does this thing with his foot, I hear that. Yeah. When he basically <laughs> punches himself in the privates, that's the snare drum sound, right? <laughs> and that's all I could think about as At a kid. At a sensory level. Yeah, you and you have saying. everything blocking yeah. you. You can't really see what's going on. So I remember I would listen to music and go, okay, I know that sound. And I know which one of these things makes right. that sound. So when I actually got my first drum kit, they was just like, cool. I know what yeah. this is. In innately, I know what this is. Mm -hmm. Never had a lesson. Never had anything. I think I sat down with Chris Penny from Dillinger Skate Plan, and and I was like, I'm gonna try to take lessons. And then he sat down. I was like, Yep, I just shouldn't play ever again because I'm never gonna be like that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but I wanted to get better, so I played and I, I joined this band. We got signed to a couple labels. We toured. We had great success, and then I stepped out. And the band ended up disbanding, but I went on to perform with bigger and bigger artists. And I toured hmm. all around and ended up in these huge studio sessions with some well-known artists, some some not so well-known artists. And then I kind of one day was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Hmm. I was like right in the middle of my, my 20s. I must have been like 23 or 24. I was like, I don't want to do this. And the question is, well, why? You've locked yourself in a room since you were a kid playing drums for four hours a day for years on end to yeah. escape a shitty life and circumstances and all that stuff. What happened? And I was like, well, there's no end goal. Hmm. I have no security in this. Hmm. There's nothing here for me. I've got no investments, no stability to set me up for the rest of my life. What am I doing? I don't, so you were next, I, like, I don't know right? when my next. I don't know when my next paycheck is coming. Like, yeah. and I immediately just like fell out of love with drums. I was like, these are the most evil things I've ever done. Wow! I was like, I've chased years <laughs> of my life for this rock star moment, and practice and practice and practice, and I have all these great feelings while I'm on stage, and that's good for that moment in time. But after that, you still have nothing. Hmm. You don't have a, a retirement account. No, no band or no no artist or management company is taking money out and putting it away right. from you. What a profound so I stepped away. realization. Th those yeah. guys aren't building you a Roth IRA. Yeah so, yeah. so I stepped away and was like, cool. Now that I'm in my, my mid twenties, how can I fix all of this now? Right now. Mm -hmm. Join the army, baby. Mm. Wow. Join the army straight away. And I tried to convince myself. I was like, yeah, this is going to be awesome for me. I'm going to be a super soldier and like, no, dude. And then I did all that. I had retirement and all that. I fell into that. I drank that Kool-Aid for so long. And I just remember I was on deployment and I was sitting there and bullets were ricocheting off rocks. And I'm going, why the fuck am I here? This isn't drums. This isn't fun. <laughs> Definitely not drums. <laughs> yeah, I, I just remember I've that. I suddenly realized <laughs> this isn't fun. Yeah, so I remember that and I'm going, oh, fuck, I'm stuck with this for oh. years now. Damn, I signed a contract. Yeah. How long were you in the military? I love that bullets are going around you and your thought is, I'm stuck, no, really, doing, that's a, I'm stuck with this for years. That's a, that's a true not story. Like, let me Yeah, there were, there were guns going off <laughs> at the range and bullets just, ping, you can hear them bouncing yeah. off dude, rocks. Dude, where were you? I was in drumland in my head, dude. I was in uh, Iraq and okay. I'm going... The fuck? I don't belong <laughs> here. And then I got shot right in the leg. Bang. Jeez. 
Right after wow. that thought, I got shot right no in the leg. <laughs> yeah. Dude, wait, hold on. That's true story. Crazy. So how oh old my were God. you? So, how old was I? Yeah. Oh, in your dude, 20s, oh my right? God. Yeah. I mean, I'm 36 now. Um, I had to be 28, 20 okay. years old around then. Yeah. Back it up a little bit. So that transition from when you had that profound, like, sort of realization that drumming. Yeah. Not that you're going to quit drumming, it sounds like, but that... You well, know, the real playing full time touring wasn't came that you. I needed more besides drums. Like yeah, I needed more, more yeah. fulfillment, more security in a, in a shit world. You know what I mean? And right. drums, I didn't have the wherewithal or the discipline to put money away into individual retirement accounts or any of that. Like you're not taught these things, so how do how do you know? But that was the reason I stepped out was yeah. I wanted something more than what I was actually getting. I had a beautiful home. I yeah. had a beautiful cars and clothes like i had everything i wanted hmm. on paper but nothing was there for me at the end of my life nothing hmm. what made you gravitate towards the military i always wanted to do that we had recruiters that would come to school push up challenges do all that stuff and i was like nice. man this looks so badass yeah. and i was a troubled kid i got picked on i got beat up i had a miserable shitty childhood just straight yeah. away yeah um and i remember like that felt like a safe place for me to go where i could just blend in and nobody knew me and all the beatings and shit would stop right that's not true <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is yeah. far from true no. yeah. i got beat more when i went to the military right, right. imagine yeah. that yeah yeah so it started in high school and then mm -hmm. that was just the moment where in my career i was like i'm done i don't want to do this hmm. so i started i started later mm -hmm. in life in in the military and wow. yeah i'm sure like being i mean i've never been in the military but like being a part of that collective unit is probably also mm -hmm. super profound and yeah it is i quickly mean, i quickly learned that my mother was preparing me for basic training my whole life by screaming at me the way she did. So it was a breeze. I walked in and was like, that's all you got, drill sergeant? Dude, come on. <laughs> you met my mom? Yeah. Yeah. You met my mom. <laughs> my, my mom yells just that good. <laughs> Actually, did you learn this from her? No, oh, there was, there were times I was just like, man, this guy needs to try harder if he's trying to break me because I'm hardened already. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my God. I got a calloused soul, my guy. Yeah, for real. You gotta you gotta know me on a personal level if you're gonna hurt my feelings. Yeah, but so yeah. the the music experience of touring and you know, being in vans and sleeping on top of amps and then graduating to tour buses and then planes, like it all really prepped me for military. Yeah. The shitty circumstances, <laughs> unfortunate things, you just embrace the suck and living in the moment, right? Yeah, just reacting. Just be there. It sucks now, it'll be over in five minutes. Hmm. You know what I mean? Just don't quit. Keep going. It's only temporary. And that took from music to the military. And then I took right back to the mindset of I wanted to be in music. But I lived in New Jersey of all places. I, I hate to admit that I'm from such a cesspool of a place. <laughs> hey, East Coast, baby. <laughs> New York. Yeah, I agree with you in New Jersey, but... Yeah, yeah, dude. And I was just like, I can't have a music career here. There's there's nothing. There's nothing mm. here for me. So to spare the details and other things, let's just say that I've, I went through a lot of different jobs, mm. trying to normalize and acclimate to society and, and to a world that I didn't really want to be living in essentially hmm. like i didn't want to work a regular job i wanted to do what i was made to do which was play drums but the dichotomy is that what i love to do really there was nothing there for me there was no security again back to right. that whole retirement thing so there was this weird mental flim flam that i went through for years of my life of what do i do do i sit down and do i conform to a society that hates me yeah, because right. I sit in an office with the clacking of keyboards, and the first thing I want to do is throw myself off the third floor. Right. <laughs> I just, I can't do it. I yeah. never was that guy. I am yeah. not, there's no satisfaction behind that for me. Hmm. I get everything I want at the end of my life. That's great. But here and now, it's pure misery. Yep. And we as humans are made for way more than Well, yeah, bleak especially here in Nashville, I feel like yeah. you are, the majority of people yeah. would probably feel well, that way. Was, you know. I remember I was working for an insurance company in New York City. And I kind of spaced out and all the sounds around me kind of heightened. And I heard the humming of the air conditioner. I heard the copier going off. I heard the yep. click, 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 click. And I'm like, yo, get me out. Yes, this. I am yeah. so done. I've typed up an email and I was in a high profile position in this company. And I was like, I quit. Boop. Damn. And I sent the email. <laughs> I stood up and I walked out and I never came back. Wow. And, and that moment was when I decided I'm going back into music. Yeah. But 
I lived in New Jersey, so what do you do? <laughs> now I got no job. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm screwed now, right? <laughs> so let's figure this out. And then the pandemic hit, and I was yeah. like, this is my time. Yeah, this is it. You're like, I'm ready, though, right? I mean, Yeah, so I was yeah. living there for a while, um, and then I, I split. I, I had to come to Nashville, and like, it was that. It was the mentality of, I have to at least try this once so I can say that I did it. And if I go back to music and it fails, at least I tried. But I'm doing it with the intention of this is forever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build something that's mine so I no longer have to feel like a cog in the machine. Mm. And I get to do what I love to do every single day and help everyone along the way achieve their goals, right? right. That was the mentality. But how? What do I have to offer? I'm a true soldier. I can kill you, but that's not going to help. <laughs> right? Like, would it help if I killed you? <laughs> yeah, no, I like, wouldn't. Like, oh, like I, can't, okay. I can't get right. I can't get a job being a professional Next. assassin. Right. Like, yeah. well, well, you can, but that's, you know, that's, that's a different another, podcast. That's, that's a different different thing, so yeah. in, that, in that mentality, were you thinking, like, the return to music for you, was that return to playing? Or were you, because you were already attacking in New Jersey, right? Yeah. Sort of the, the roots of FDS was in New Jersey? Yeah, so FDS started under a different name. And okay. the two articles, the Canvas Rebel article and the Nashville Voyager, like, I'm very, very open. I'm very honest about things. I don't, I, yeah, I, I was put reading, it out there even at the that, risk yeah. of making myself look bad. I don't care. It's a real story. Yeah, it's really informative. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all real. Like, yeah. I was homeless because I refused to conform. I think we skipped over that part. But yeah, that's, we did. that's, that's what that's was interesting. That was after the military, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. why I said, like, when I refused to conform to this world, I was like, I'm not doing this. I only am made for this. And I bounced from job to job to job mm. to the point where I basically ended up becoming homeless. I sold off all my assets. I gave all my assets away to family. And I had not a pot to piss in. I could have easily just got another job, but it's not me, dude. It yeah. never was me. Sorry. Call me irresponsible. I don't care. I, <laughs> I have a goal and I intended to see that through. Yeah. So I became homeless. I lived out of the back of my Jeep for a long time. Wow. I met this, this woman who apparently didn't give a crap that she told me. And it was like, cool, there's light at the end of this tunnel, right? Like I'm in the worst situation and circumstances I can be in. Like if I can, if I can find a woman that can bypass looking at me living in my Jeep, like I can clean a snare drum, no problem. You know what I mean? Like not, yeah. not a big deal. So can, I am the snare drum. I am the <laughs> snare. Yep. <laughs> Retune a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so beyond that, that's when the pandemic hit and then I moved here and this, that was it. But I, man, talk about, I'm just like, I'm just amazed that these, I mean, you're kind of glossing over some of these details, but this, these are huge yeah, life events. I yeah. mean, I mean, talk about like perspective and, you know, especially coming from the military. How did that make you feel coming back to music? Did it give you more perspective? Like it's just drums, you know, like it's not life or death. I was very unsure. Yeah. I was incredibly unsure because, you, you know, you make such a hard left turn and then you're walking away from the one thing that you wanted, which was the stability and the security and the safety of knowing you put in your time and then you can be okay later to then give all of that up and go back to a world that is passionate to you, a world that you love, but there's nothing there. Yeah. I think guys need to understand as players, as techs in this industry, nobody is setting you up for financial stability at the end of your career. Nobody. Right. You need to make moves now to figure that out. If you want to have a career in this industry for the long haul, you need to start putting away your money on your own by yourself into an account that you opened by yourself. Yeah, that's like great people advice. People have to yeah. stew on that and understand that it's great to get on stage. It's great to get in a bar. It's great to take photos. And it's great to live in Nashville with the neon lights and the music. But dude, have you contributed anything for yourself for your older age in the last five years? If you haven't, you need to get on that now. You need to have that understanding now. Even if you leave drumming, it doesn't matter. You got to put you first. Like, this is great. Doing drums, being in this industry, it's the best job in the world. It is. It really, truly is. Yeah. But that's all that is. When you get 60 years old and you get 50 years old and you look back and you go, I had all this time and I did nothing. Yeah. I did nothing. Shit. What do I do? Yeah, but especially if you want to start a family, and it's, you know, more important. Yeah. yeah, that's that's great. I mean, how many players, especially young players, moving here? Yeah, man. Because you're right. I mean, and you know, you gotta obviously get those gigs initially, but then 
at a certain point, that mentality changes to, okay, how can this be a, something for longevity? Yeah, right? so so the FDS thing circles into this, and this was created with the intent of never having to work for somebody else ever again. I can get up when I want. I can go take a doo-doo whenever I want. <laughs> I can I can do what I want when I want, essentially, and not to be micromanaged by anybody. But this is mine. Hmm. I, I, this is... This is for my peace of mind that I'm doing something for me. Yeah. I am purely responsible for the success or failure of this company. Hmm. I've been praying it hasn't been a failure and it only will keep going up and up and up. But I am putting in that work every single day with the intent of never going back to living in a Jeep or getting shot in the leg or stabbed in the hand ever again. Yeah, man. Jeez. And only as of recently did that did that haunting, I don't know, that thing in the air that's like retirement, financial freedom at the end of your life. It's yeah. still hovering. It's still whispering. Hmm. It's calling me, you know. Man. I even now as the owner of FDS, I have to worry about that. Still put money away, retire, hmm. 401k, safety, 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 security, security, security. Hmm. And every now and again, you start realizing you don't get that in this industry as a player or a tech or a business owner. Hmm. And it, it makes you go, I'm in this, I wanna be out of this. I'm in this, but I wanna be out of this. And you yeah, constantly, constantly have this yeah. ebb and flow of, I wanna do this, I don't wanna do this. I wanna do this, I don't wanna do this. Yeah. And you're stuck in purgatory forever because you can't step away from what you love. You can't. But you know, if you do, it's better for you down the road. But if you do that, you're miserable because you didn't do what you love to do. So yeah. what do you do? Wow. You do what you did. You find that cross section. That's insane. Yeah. And yeah. you have to try. You have to be so disciplined. You have to be so focused on it all. Like it 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 hurts me when I have to take money and not put it into my bills or anything that I consider an investment and I have to put it into a retirement account. And I can't use that to go get drunk with my buddies or go go take, you know, go on a date somewhere with the lady and pamper her. Like it, yeah. It's hard. It's discipline, dude. And it's it's really, really difficult. Yeah. It's really difficult. Did that discipline get taught from the military? Or, I mean, you sounds like you're someone that's always had that mentality. Yeah, military right, does on. not teach you financial discipline. It doesn't teach you financial freedom. Not financial, but just in general, that discipline. Yeah. Right, I mean. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Being disciplined is the, the hardest thing for a lot of people to do. It, it's incredibly difficult. And that was one of the bullet points that I wanted to kind of bring up in the conversation yeah. of not just being a drum tech, but being a drummer. It's, it's all discipline. Yeah. Again, it's just, it's just back to that intent thing. Like everybody know I've got to practice today. I got to chart yeah. out these songs. That's not discipline. You're just doing the work that you have to do to get that gig because you want that money. Yeah. Where, where's your discipline behind that? Oh, well, cause I didn't go with my buddies. I charted music. That's not the discipline. Yeah. Hmm. It's not the discipline. The discipline is when you get behind that kit, and you think it's the you show, whether you're playing Broadway or you're playing on a cruise ship or you're playing a five-year-old's party, the discipline comes and you realize it's not the you show. You're just a part of the bigger team, the bigger picture, and you operate within that. That's where your discipline is hmm. because you realize it's not about you. It's about all of you getting the same thing done together. Dude, that's so spot on. Yeah, we talked that same concept with uh, Nico Medina. Remember? Yeah. You talked about drum corps. Yeah. Are you familiar with like DCI and like- Absolutely. Yeah, like marching band. It it's it's the same thing. Like these, in these camps, like you have all these people that have all these little tasks, you know? And he says like the, what do you say? The cook is no better than like the, the snare. Yeah, yeah like, absolutely. Everyone has a part. Very much like he's saying, it's very much along the same lines. Because he said the bottom line requisite is that you- can play the show perfectly like that's that's baseline like oh you, mm -hmm. you you perform that task perfectly great that's where you start yeah and from there that's where real the real discipline happens and that's is like that's what's expected of you it's true i mean one of the biggest things for me as a tech and maybe this can translate into drumming as well but i've preached this to a lot of a lot of people and it's a it's like a thing that i live by and it falls in with the intent it falls in with the discipline and understanding your role it's the hard right or the easy wrong, hmm. right? That's what it comes down to in everything, in life, wow. in everything you do from the moment you wake up in the morning. It's the hard right or the easy wrong. That resonates, man. That's good. Big yeah. time. The hard right will always end up being easy 
and the easy wrong will always end up being hard. Hmm. Hmm. That, that type of military stuff, yeah, you, I've learned that, and I can apply that over here to FDS. Dude, yeah. I've got 17 snare drums in my shop right now. A bag of cymbals, a floor tom that has to be converted into a snare drum. I've got restorations out of my wazoo. Mm -hmm. I just bought some hi-hat cymbals and tried a new traditional cymbal restoration method to see if I can bring them back to being brand new again. And I did, it was cool, but that was intention. Yep. That was discipline. It was late at night. I have so much life shit that I have to process right now. <laughs> so much heavy emotional crap that I have to do, but I'm in that shop and I am working my dick off until midnight for what? So that the hard stuff I'm doing now ends up becoming way easier later down the line. Yeah. Yeah. And that security, like you talked about. It's that security thing, man. Love that. And it's like, I think a lot of guys hear stuff like this, like self help things and whatever, but you put this stuff into practice, your life, it, you will be unrecognizable as a human being. Yeah. You'll be unrecognizable. The power of focus, the power of now, operating with intent, understanding discipline and how to have it, making the hard choice to do the right thing, which ends up being easier. It's all stuff that can propel you as far as you can take yourself yeah. in this industry. Tech, drummer, or janitor, it doesn't matter. Yeah. People that apply that consistently, it's like every five years, that's like a new guy. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I'm like, what? you're doing what now? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, even just yeah. waking up at 5 a.m., as horrific as that sounds for people, your whole life will change. Yeah. If you start join the 5 a.m. club, get up, yeah. go do a little little exercise. Oh, yeah. God, you'll feel like hell for a yeah. long time. But damn it, will you be way more productive, have way more time in your day. You'll learn all your drum yeah. stuff or your tech stuff and your knowledge way faster. Are you in the 5 a.m. club? I try to be. You try to be. I haven't been recently because I'm six, dealing with some seven, stuff. But yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, mean, I can't. I can't join that because I go to bed around four because of yeah. late working. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Just make changes, dude. Yeah, make, make <laughs> life changes. changes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. reading a really good book. I was telling Nate about. Uh, maybe you've read it. The Power of Habits. Yeah, I have it. Sitting yeah, on my wall. So right now. good. Yeah. Oh my god. They talk about like small wins. Power of small wins. Yeah, absolutely. It's like little things consistently. Yeah. So that's true, man. Um, I remember with uh, being out with with Dave Matthews or Dave Marotta now, as, as he likes to be called, with Saving Abel. And we, we had this like long philosophical conversation of like him just getting kind of into that band mm -hmm. and succeeding. And we got into the conversation of drummers and being entry level to being the rock star of where you want to go, but how to get there. And part of that conversation was set little itty bitty goals for yourself hmm. so they're easily attainable so you know that you can actually accomplish them so you don't feel like you're struggling yeah, by the time right. you accomplish all these little goals and you look back dude you're so much further down that line yes. yeah you've come and so far all those small point. wins you get that you know that serotonin boost and it actually helps you yeah. go to the next one it's like you're climbing that small ladder yeah yeah instead of trying to jump take those big leaps have you ever played an rpg what type of rpg well, what type have you played? <laughs> I have fired quite a few of them. <laughs> we'll get, let, let's hit me. What, what, what are we talking about? We're talking missiles, explosions. Oh no, no, no! Sending tanks. Have, no, have you feet played one? Or not that kind of RPG? A real life player. Yeah, talking yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I should I should have. Yes. Get who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. That's like, yeah, sorry. Captain Finch. Mortar is Captain mortar Finch. can have different meanings. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, that um, brings back wonderful memories. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well, I, I was specifically thinking of skill trees within role play games. Right, okay. right. So, and this is that was something that was suggested to me by a guitarist in my band, Fly Information, a guy named Dante Frizzell. Frizzello, sorry. sorry. Frizziello. God, it's hard to speak sometimes. It's because you don't have a beer in your hand. That's true. I know. I need to drink more. In the fridge. Um, yeah. So he was talking about, because he's he's like super type A, was a lawyer in D.C., like killing it, making great money. And then one day he was like, same as you, fuck this. I hate this job. I'm so miserable. I want to play music full time. He's the, he's the most, his output is unbelievable. First, first of all, right now he's playing with Steve Vai. Hmm. Um, he's been teching with him for a minute, and now he's it's not announced yet officially, but it'll be announced short, See, shortly. There you enough. go, man. He's yeah. going, he will be playing guitar on Vai's next tour, but 
I was talking to him about achieving goals because he's just so, so incredible at it. And he was like, you know what? I don't necessarily have like a routine in the morning, but what I do have is I always have a short-term goal and I put violent, furious action towards my short-term <laughs> yeah, goals, me that, yeah. um, which was my favorite thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And he goes, and he goes, if you want to get really nerdy, build yourself a skill tree. So like, okay, so huh. this next skill, if I can, if I can do this, then after that, I can, I can go after this. And he goes, and then when you get to the top, you see this massive, crazy, virtuosic skill that mm -hmm. when everything, everything comes together, he's like, but it all leads to that hat. He goes, know where you're going, but Short terms, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Just think about that in the moment. And destroy it. He's amazing. Man, Man that, you get along well with him. Yeah. That sentiment yeah. that you just shared reminds <laughs> me of this like sickly little thought that I've had since I was a kid, which is that life is a video game. Yes. Mm. Prove to me that life is not a video game. Yeah. I won't because it is. <laughs> Besides the fact that you yeah. only die once. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean by that, though? Life, life has like, so many levels, so many chapters. Yeah, totally. Different final bosses that you just got to crush sometimes. Yes. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then you have you have to buy things, whether it's armor for your player or mm -hmm. food to survive or whatever. Life is exactly like a video game. You have to earn the money and complete these missions in life <laughs> to earn these things, Love to it. buy the next things to propel you to the next level. Hmm. Life is a video game. Just don't die. Love it. Right. <laughs> yeah, just you don't just, die. You just get yeah. the one guy, but life is a game. Yeah, man. I remember yeah. I was playing, and you can judge me all you want. I don't give a crap. I was playing Pokemon. thought Pokemon Why was the coolest thing in the world. Why would I judge you for playing world. something awesome? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had Game Boy Color, and I'm like, all right, cool. I can't enter this door without, without this much stuff. I don't remember. Yeah. Probably Ash. No, no. Oh, yeah. do you mean the Pokemon? Yeah, yeah, Pikachu. yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah. It's the first yeah, one always. you get. Yeah, so I remember. I was like, I can't cross into this other world unless I have this money. How do I get that money? I got to go do this thing and deliver this package. So you have to do these missions to accomplish certain things in order to get to a next level. And like the light bulb went off. I was like, Christ, I can't buy this house unless I save up this money, but I can't save up this money unless I do these things in life. It's mm. so like life is exactly like a video game. Yes. I always so, held on to that forever. Yeah. 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 And there are side quests. Oh, there and are side quests. Just And for me, in playing video games like that, Side quests are my favorite part. Feels great in a game. Yeah. That feels so much better in real life. Dude, it's just mm -hmm. doing the right thing, man. Yes. It is. And I, more people in this city, in my opinion, need to get back to being humans. Yes. Not being people. Be a human. Oh, man. I love There's that. There's a big yeah. difference, man. It's not the me, me, me mentality. Be a human. Yes. Have, have some leadership behind you. This is an army values, dude. It applies to life. Right? Totally. Yeah. You have to have leadership. You have to operate with, with dignity, integrity, selfless service. You have to go back to being a human being. Don't be a people. That's so poetic because now, I mean, literally like as a drum tech business owner in Nashville, like you're serving others, right? Yeah. Like, Talk to us a little bit more about starting a business in Nashville, what that was like and kind of what your day to day sure. is like as well. I had no clue how to start a business in Nashville. I just knew yeah. what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how. And I knew who was in town and I didn't want to step on their toes either. I wanted to do my thing, but like not be the jerk that's like, I'm taking down everybody because capitalistic prick. No, 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 no. I wanted to do something for me that was good for others. So like I knew drum supply was in town. I knew forks was in town. I knew Billy Baker was in town and a couple other guys. Yeah. And they've carved their own lane. They've worked so hard to get to where they are. I respect that and I leave that there. I'm not coming for you. I'm doing me, right? So I I was like, okay, I don't necessarily know a lot about the city or about what I want to do in general. And what year did you move here? 2019. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's only been a few years. In September of 2019. Yeah. I came here and I started FDS drum services in the middle of the pandemic and I was slammed from the moment I even really? put it out. Yeah. Huh. Chris Flick was my first client ever. Called me like two days after I started advertising. It's like my hi-hat stand broke. Can you come to the studio and fix it? And I was just like, yes, I can. Yeah. GPS says 12 minutes. I'll be there in six. Like yeah, I was on a mission yeah. to succeed. You had that intent. Yeah. You, just, you knew was, your passion. I was on a mission. There was no question. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So then I remember I talked wow. to Billy Baker picking brains, getting some knowledge. And then like Joe Dorn over at Forks, who's the yeah. best human being in the world. Dude, Joe is awesome. Like 
this is this is the one thing that I do love about this industry is I'm in the drum tech drum maintenance business. Forks has you know a drum shop in there, but I can go in and I can pick brains. Yeah. And no one's like get out of here competition. There yeah, is no right. competition. I can't touch Forks. Forks can't touch me. Yeah. Right. Like there is this divider. We're in our own separate. They can coexist. Our own separate world that we can coexist. There's that camaraderie have, as drummers, which is. I think is is we've talked about this like very unique to drummers. Right. You don't really see that in a lot of other guitar players, bass players, whatever. For sure. Yeah. So that's that's how I basically ended up getting started was picking the brains of people around me that knew way more than I did. And so you started I, fixing gear, and then that was that kind of like word of mouth. Like, did that person yeah. then go like, hey, like, their friend has a problem. Oh, go to Finch. 100%. Is that how it mm-hmm. kind of spread? Yeah, like, I moved here and didn't have a budget for the company, didn't have a singular dollar to invest into growing this thing and turning it into what I want. And it literally just came from stating my intentions to the people who would call me. If you were happy with something that we did, jump on Google. Please leave me a review. It will help me tremendously. Yeah, yeah. I did it with the intention of I want to succeed, but I also want you happy. And I can't succeed if you're not happy enough that you want to jump on Google and leave me a review. Right. Which, you know, side note, if you're liking this podcast, go ahead and give us a review. It helps us out a lot. I love it. There you I've go. made Nate so corporate now. It so, <laughs> makes my heart so warm. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> and that's the thing, man. It's like, if you don't ask, you don't get. Right. Like, the only way yeah. FDS grows or drum supply or this podcast grows or your career grows is if you literally ask people right. to help take you further. Yeah. yeah. You it's have really to ask community for effort. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for the review. Yeah. It's that simple. Go to Facebook, like FDS, please. It helps. Go to Instagram, like the Nashville Drummers podcast. Grow this baby. Right. Ask for it. Yeah. It's a button push. Boop. As minuscule as that seems, it's so huge. Well, because we're living in a digitally run world. Right. So much is dependent on having some amount of social media following. So like just people giving you positive reviews on Yelp for your restaurant. Every, all of that stuff matters. It my, all matters. When, when we're looking, when I, my wife and I are looking for a restaurant, I'll be like, Oh, you know, you know what sounds good to me is this kind of, I want some Italian. Okay. Well, what's in the area of this? Mm, what do the reviews say? Right. Uh, well, mm-hmm. uh, man, it would have been nice if the reviews were nice and we wouldn't have to pick a new it, restaurant to go so to. It's so true, yeah. man. It's funny for me, and maybe this is kind of lame, but like I'll go on Instagram. I'm like, do they know how to market? Like, do they take good photos? Of That's their fair. Food? You know, like, did they? Because to me, like, that is, it's, it's not just like, oh, they, they have someone good at social media, but that, that mentality of like excellence mm-hmm. is found throughout the entire business. It means like it's found its way from the kitchen through marketing, through the intern doing their Instagram. You know, Every, and that means everything I'm gonna go there. in this world on social media, it, it's all perspective. Yeah. It's all and how you look at it. If you have a crappy photo, then you are immediately judged as a crappy company, crappy yeah. business. Low you, value thing. You are a product yeah. for yeah. sale and your packaging needs to mm. scream, right. eat me. Yeah. Right. Come to me. Buy Every me. detail. Yeah. Trust in me. Hire me. You have to be professional. Yes, you are you a gift, and if you wrap yourself in shit, you will not be received. No, you just smell like <laughs> shit. Yeah, what a yeah, line. That's yeah. great. Great. So what moment did it turn into? I mean, it sounds like you initially wanted it to be a business, but like, was there a moment where maybe during the pandemic where it was like, okay, I have a few clients to like, oh, this is actually, this could be a sustaining thing. And like, is this actually going to grow? Yeah. So I learned real quick that I had to change my perspective on the people who called me. In the beginning, they were, you know, as we would label them, customers or clients. And I hate that term. I hate those words. Yeah. Referring to someone that's trusting me with their gear. You're not a client, dude. You're you're a human being that paid for this out of your own money. And you're looking at me for help. I care about you. Mm. I was that guy. Hell, when I first started FDS, I was that same guy. I didn't have a pot to piss in, man. I had to treat people like they were my friends because... I found solace in that. I found mm, solace totally. in knowing that when this guy calls me next time, I can follow up with him on his gig or his kid or his wife or the construction in his house. People who come to FDS and it sounds cheesy, they're friends. They're not clients. They're not customers. They're not a number. Like literally there for you. You need help moving out of your house? Just call me. Yeah. Like that, that's so it's wholesome. Just, it's a, it's yeah. a real thing though. Like it's yeah. not. It's not a bullshit. I don't care if you like me or you like this company or not. I don't care. It's about 
being friends. It's not about what I can gain from you. It's what we gain together right. as people moving yeah, in this, the same industry. Yeah. And I picked Further up on that together. from you very yeah. early on. I, f- I think I had you, you remember you helped me with some Your bass drum snare. pedal. Bass drum pedal. Yeah. He, he yeah. fixed my, well, it wasn't broken, but you just, you cleaned it up. You made it. It was an old pearl, an old pearl. pedal in the warehouse that you God, made I need brand to new. Mine. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I immediately, and I had just met you you know, maybe a month or two earlier. I, I was like, yeah, like we were a good friend. I didn't think it, this, it didn't feel like a transaction. And it should, you know, it and, should never and, be that way. And it you're, should never be you're that so way. responsive text, email, like whatever you were, you were there for me. So I, I appreciated that. I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's good. Well, that's also good on the total opposite end of the spectrum because some people feel myself included embarrassed to ask for payment from a friend for a service that they provide. But you, in your case, you're like, no, we're, we're friends to start with. If we're if we're friends, we're you know, we're doing this interaction. That's, that's exactly we're, it. we're friends. I'm not going to be embarrassed at all to ask for payment for the service I'm providing. Yeah, if people right. are your friend, they right. will support you. Right. One of the worst things to be in this industry or any industry is the guy that says, "Well, my buddy John or or my friend Erica, you know, does this, so I'll just ask them to do it." And you just think they're going to do it because they're your friend and you don't have right. to compensate them for all that. Right. Like that's not, so don't be that person. No. Yeah. Don't be that person. If you come to me and which I've done for a lot of people, if you come to me with a drum and you're like, Hey, I want you to refurb this. And there's really not anything that I need to do besides wipe it down and clean it up. And it took me 20 minutes of my time. I'm not going to charge you for that. Yeah. For what? What did I do? <laughs> Nothing you gave me impacted or took away from my time except for 20 minutes. Like, that's wrong. Hmm. Now, it's different if the person that you know does it out of the kindness of their heart and doesn't charge you, but you should always be willing to reach deep into that pocket and pay your friend for their freaking service that they provide. Totally, yeah. No matter what 100%. it is. 100%. Yeah. Man, you know, honestly, I, I hate being secretive, but there's a fine line in this business between like, guiding people and then just giving it all away. Like I've worked hard to learn. You guys have worked hard to learn. Everybody works hard to learn and develop their craft. Yeah. You can guide and you can advise, but if you start giving away everything, you are become invaluable to people. You become invaluable. That's so true. Here's my one counterpoint. I think this is what I believe. Hot take. I think my, here's my hot take. Yeah. (laughs) I think most people won't put what you give them into action. I think most people are too fucking lazy to do it. I that's because re- I've people will ask me, well, how do you how do you develop blah 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 on the drums? How do you, how did you get that? I'm like, I'll tell them exactly what to do. I'm like, you won't do it. Well, that's the thing. Like, well, they want go, a quick, go, easy go, answer. Go for it. Like, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. please. And they're like, ha, oh, sweet. Yeah, I'm like, and if you go, if you do go and learn it, great. But I'm like, whatever, doesn't hurt me. But yeah, I, th- I really do think that most people simply won't put into action whatever knowledge you give them. Dude, we have, execute. we as people in this country have lost all conceptualized understanding of what hard work is. Right. Well, we're not hungry. We're so used to convenience and everything just being there and ready to go yeah. and handed to us that we forget we have to do, we have to work. We have to do the work. Yes. But two-hour free delivery on my doorstep. That's what I'm talking about. You are the problem, man. <laughs> I, I'm not. Well, I'm part of the problem. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Uh, this got conversation the spurs up so many things that I think Good, yeah. I, I, it's so important for people to hear. Just fucking clean off and walking away from it all. Yeah. It's like, and not having anybody know your business or anything. It's like one of those things that I think people need to do now with social media. Mm-hmm. It's okay to live life. It's just a lot of noise. Fly under the radar and make moves and not tell a single person. Yeah, there's something really powerful about that. We've talked about that too. From from like an artist standpoint, especially, you know, I'm just like kind of secretly doing something really cool and then just dropping the EP. It's like, yeah, just drop it. You were working on that for two years? Holy shit. Not to mention, (laughs) making an announcement that you're going to do a thing provides your brain with the same amount of dopamine as doing the thing. So, yeah. what does that mean? It means you're way less likely to do the thing you've announced that you're going to do. So, shut the fuck up and do the thing. <laughs> Man, people just... And then yeah. tell people you did it. See, but, but I, if I you, think... If I you think, want to. Um, 
I think both can exist. Telling people of like, hey, this is upcoming. I think it's a balance. There's like, I, obviously, there's I don't a balance. Think you can be if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing it to create the pressure behind you, like, hey, I'm gonna right. do this thing, and here's the date. Or like accountability. Oh, I really, I told him what day I'm, I'm driving this thing. And it's not ready. Yeah. I really need to get on this thing. <laughs> and it's like you're more worried about the perception and like response. Yeah. Like just no, focus on the cr- on the th- product That's first. Fair. That's the yeah. key word. Then That's... when you're ready, go all go, have a blitzkrieg approach to getting it out there. Yeah. So that's what right. I was going to jump back in with was was that word. And, and I'm only bringing this up about like stop with your political, stop yeah. with your dinner. I don't care that you're at Arby's. I don't care. Oh Nobody God. around. Don't tell you, me you went to Arby's. Nobody around you cares. Like right. you. People who are listening to this podcast are listening to this podcast with the intent of either learning something, getting a piece of knowledge, advice they didn't get before, with the hope of growing and moving forward. So here is the reason I brought this up. Here's the nugget they're looking for. Yeah. Focus on what you are here to do. Hmm. That's it. Close your Facebook. Close your Instagram. Focus. Yeah. Focus. Love that. If you're putting so much time and effort into your your dinner or your political opinion, what you could accomplish if you just redirected that energy into something that matters to you, again, you would be a completely different, unrecognizable person. Right. Focus. So true. You have to focus. Tim Buell talks about like deep work. And, and this is more about getting a, a specific task done, such as editing a podcast or in his case, editing his crazy transcriptions, but mm. like he'll lock himself in his basement, I think, or his room and phones off, social media yeah. is away. He'll, you know, an hour of deep work. You get so much done that way. It's know? true. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's and hard. It's, it's so hard though. <laughs> have you read the book, Deep Work? I haven't. It's, it's worth reading. Uh, one of the hallmarks of Deep Work is it takes an average of 20 minutes before you really fall into that place where your brain is ready to really really be locked in on that thing. Mm. That's where yeah. that's where the good stuff starts to happen. If you're checking your phone, you're checking Instagram, you're looking at Facebook, you're watching YouTube videos, whatever, you're distracted at all in that, it's yeah. going to pull you away from that. Yeah. Being solely focused on that one, like you said, just focus Laser. on the yeah. thing yeah. you are doing. Intent. Yeah. Full intent on 100%. that thing. It, 20 minutes in, you're like, okay, I just slid into the zone. And now we're going. Yeah. That's, yep. It's huge. You know the Huberman Lab podcast? You got me turned on to that. It's this neuro, uh, neurologist, scientist yeah. from... Uh, Stanford? Stanford, yeah. Super smart guy. You, you really dig it. Okay. But Dude, he yeah, talks all check about... Him out. Like, he is, he is, and I really yeah. reserve this term, he's a game changer. Really mm-hmm. is, yeah. yeah. But right. just, it just reminded me, because he goes into different tactics and... What's he called? Tool sets, right? Or tools... Mm-hmm. For all all areas of life, how to sleep better, how to be more productive. And he goes into like, okay, deep work, everything from like, okay, what is the optimal time for that? What mm-hmm. temperature should the your house? Oh, there's be a total at? science behind being there's a human. There's so much yeah, he, oh, yeah, he goes into all that. I mean he has yeah. like two hour podcast. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he has so what, helpful. To, to bring it back, life is a video game. <laughs> and that guy has the it's cheat cracked. codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were talking about that, okay, the the analogy there, the cheat code is knowledge. Right. Right? That's the cheat code. Yes. Doing stuff like this, learning from each other. Yeah. I mean, it's what I put right. in my last article. <laughs> they, they asked me, some this Canvas Rebel company asked me something about books. And I listed a whole bunch of books. And I was like, it's funny that you asked me this because I really think that every single true piece of knowledge that can elevate us as humans, not people, as humans, is in books. Hmm. You just have to be willing to open it up and sit there and read it. Yeah. yeah. Everything you need to know is in books, dude. Everything. Everything. Yeah, it's all there. Literally everything. The smartest people ever wrote books. Do you want to kill a person? It's in a book. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to cook something? I'll it's just in talk a book. to you. Yeah. <laughs> you. You think you're going crazy? Yeah. There's a self help book for that. Yeah. Get better Not at drumming, an application. Books, right? Yeah. A book. A book. The but a book. Yeah, but book. That, you know that smell? The smell of old paper. I yeah. Love that smell. Yeah, but drum teching is not really in a book, is it? There's not a book. But well, but that was advocate drum though, in books. The <laughs> the mindsets of being a good drum tech. Or in books, away yes. from drumming, right? Just the, a, the mental tools yeah. are in there books, goes. right? Okay. And, all, and all the details for each of those things, dude. If you yeah. feel socially awkward and uncomfortable talking to people, there's a book for that. Yeah, yeah. it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Love that book. Yeah, it's a great. Book. You have be. trouble focusing, and you don't know how to it's accomplish things, bits. or you don't think you yeah. can be successful. There's a book for that. It's called As You Think. There is a book for everything, dude. What's that you said? You want to learn how to play drums, but you don't know where to begin? Let me humbly suggest to you that you head on down to Music Lab Nashville 
and you talk to their crew of fantastic teachers and you jump on in and start your music journey right there. Don't want to learn drums? Want to learn guitar? Ukulele? Mandolin? Trumpet? Vocals? Keys? Sitar? Maybe not sitar, but all the other stuff for sure. Visit nashville.musiclab.co to learn more and sign up for a free trial lesson. So as we wrap up here, share with us like your current tour season. What's kind of upcoming for you? Where are you at right now? Um, well, I was just out with live uh, teching for Robin Diaz, which was Dude. awesome. Yeah. But this is going <laughs> to come right back to the beginning. I yeah. got an email and they were like, oh, the original tech just made himself available for all these shows. So too bad. So sad. You're not teching anymore. It's just, I just like that money gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stability, security, financial gone taken right out from underneath you Damn. just like that you didn't do anything wrong you did a good job everybody loves you but yeah. now you're unemployed but yeah you weren't the now original you got no guy. job this wow. is the music business dude yeah it goes right back to that financial conversation we were talking about earlier yeah man you have no security ever so anyway that happened and prior you were on the road with saving able right saving able was as a tech like the first technical real band yeah that I teched for. But before that, I was with Chris Williams from Accept. Before that, I did an Evanescence, then it was Seether before that. Wow. And then, yeah, this year has been very, very busy. Yeah. Very busy. But there's nothing on my agenda moving forward. Hard stop. Yerk. Yeah. But that, I got all the drums and all he's the He's available. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll change quick, I'm sure, I, if you wanted to. The shop is loaded, so I'm busy. I got a lot to do. Custom bass drum heads, cymbal restorations, drillings, like shell cut yeah. downs, custom snare finish. I mean, I'm, I am busy. That's great. But the tech so world, mean, I got nothing going Yeah, on. so like your right. nine to five is literally just like drum teching, but just at home for your friends here in Nashville, right? Well, Where, not but for you my service, friends, but for the friends of FDS, yeah. Clients, yeah. Friends, yeah. friends. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I see what you, I see what <laughs> yeah. you did yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Tripped yeah. me up my own words. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I see. I see Doesn't you. really like people. Yeah. <laughs> Never coming on national podcast ever again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, so that's what I got going on. Um, I am going out, ironically, with Saving Able in February. They're doing a show in Japan. Wow. Yeah, and buddy. That's... Would that be your first international tour? No. No? No, I was with Bush. And okay. we went through Europe and Germany and Switzerland. That's right. Yeah, that was that was pretty recent. Sure, that's yeah. just briefly. I mean, this could be a whole podcast separately, but like, just like, what what's it like... Because you talked a little bit about what a drum tech does, right, for the band, for the drummer. But talk to us about specifically being on tour and what that's like. I'm so glad you asked this question because yeah. I like to keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Give it to us straight, like, yeah. Everybody has this idea of, oh, I want to I want to be on tour. I want to be on the big stages. I want to be playing all these shows because rock star, and that's, that's my goal. That's why I'm doing this. Man, you will have a hard, hard reality check. Yes, you will. Because... I, even as a kid, was the guy that's like, I want to be a rock star. I want to run as far away from my life as I can, or I just want to be something or feel famous and have people praise me because I'm good at this. Total yeah. selfish mentality. Yeah. Total selfish mentality. And then I finally got on tour, and I still share this same sentiment now. It sucks. It does suck. <laughs> it sucks. Even if you have a bus, it sucks. And most tours are not on a bus. Now, don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm ungrateful that I get to do this because I very much am. And it's amazing in its own right. But dude, when you are on a bus with six, 12 other people, you can't have any of your own personal space. No. Everybody shares the same bathroom, the same space. Everything starts to smell like feet and cheese. Oof. You might have good nights of drinking and bonding and doing all that stuff. But look, you're, you're away from your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you're away from your family, your dog, yeah, you're right. away from your dog, in which my case is the most important thing in the world. Yeah. You're away from all of your personal belongings. So if something goes to shit in your life while you're on tour, you're fucked. Yes. You're fucked mentally, emotionally. You're fucked. Man, let me tell you, I know about that. Yeah. Man, let me tell you, so do I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like it's cool. The job is cool, but it, has a downside that not a lot of people either think about, understand, or even know. Being on tour sucks. It's amazing. It's awesome. But it also sucks. The bus breaks down. Nobody sleeps. You got to get a new bus. You got to get out of your bunk. It happens all the time. Yep. It's great. I love it. 
and I'll continue to, to do what I do because I'm so appreciative and I do, but it has a dark side to it that a lot of people will go, fuck this. I don't know. I don't want to deal with this. Well, there's, this is it's not just what like I a, think it was. You know what I mean? It turns into just like a survival mode, right? It For sure. Like. You need to be so mentally strong as a human being to go on tour. You have to be. Yeah. You have to be. If you're not good with social situations, you're screwed. Yeah. You're screwed. Get good before you go out. If you are For afraid sure. to talk to other people, just stay home. <laughs> yeah. Stay home. Yeah. Go. And, be, and talk about being healthy too, right? Just physically. It's so hard. Right. Being healthy right is so difficult on the road. Not yeah. enough sleep. Not too, too much yeah. fast food. You don't have a lot of choice. Dude, it, it is. It Unless you're like a musician that has a tech, you pretty much have it made. Yeah. You go to your own hotel room early. You don't have to do anything except for just show up, do your job. Maybe yeah. sh- maybe shake some babies, kiss some hands, whatever. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Awkward. Oh no. <laughs> but that's what you but that's what you do. But if but if you're a tech, oh man. Oh dude. Yeah. It's a, your your life. You're you're in it. You're, you're in do, it. You're doing all the shit work, man. I, yeah. I, I don't know if it's the right words to use, but technically it's like the construction job of the music industry. Mm. Right. Yeah, you're that up makes early, sense. you are busting ass. All day, every day, lifting up heavy things, getting dirty, breathing in garbage, dealing with different personalities, jerks, assholes, yeah. Yeah. mean <laughs> people, nice people, sweet people, mentally challenged stagehands. Yeah. All these, all these things. <laughs> so many mentally challenged stagehands. <laughs> all these things that make your life so difficult as a yeah. tech. And then you got to break it all down and get back on the. So bus. yeah, it's everything before you even touch a piece of hardware on that right. stage. It's everything before. No, I'm not trying to right? paint a bad picture as if I don't enjoy this. This is the reality of the situation. This is what it is. So yeah. I'm, I'm just answering the question. <laughs> yeah, honestly. yeah. This is you right? accepting. This, this is, is really gig. what it comes down to. Right. Yeah. And people go, oh, cool. Look who he's teching for. I'm like, yeah, but you have no idea what this actually actually entails right now i don't mind it it's fun yeah. yeah i have my times where my back sucks and i get a little crotchety on some things of course we all do yeah and any drum tech anywhere that tells you that life is not hard on the road is full of garbage dude yeah. straight away you're not cool if you pretend like there's nothing that sucks <laughs> about going on tour i'm dude. sorry I, yeah. okay this is just a, a side note virgil when i was with him we took a, a, a time lapse of me and the TM, he was also a uh, stagehand for, he did all the all the guitar stuff and all the, all the audio stuff. Just the two of us setting up yeah. the stage. And then he posted it and said, his caption was, enduring the process. Mm-hmm. And this guy got in the comments telling him how he didn't know how good he had it. And we bo- we just got in there and reamed this dude to death. You like, you have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea how little sleep is happening here, how much we're having to drive every day, mm-hmm. how heavy all this shit is, and how long it takes to set up. Like, you're fucking clueless. Dude, sometimes it's just the basic necessities. Again, this is not intended to make it sound like I hate what I do. I no. love what I do. Or yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. Right, right. behind right. doing this. Sometimes you don't get a chance to shower for days, dude. Yep. <laughs> like... Oh, don't shower. Be a man. Fuck you. No, dude. Yeah. When you're sweating. Smell good, man. For the love. When you can. Yeah. Yeah, please like, shower. Like, you gotta wash your ass. Dude. Yeah. Like, you gotta do it. Baby wipes sometimes just yes. are not enough. Especially during festival season. Holy oh. hell. Oh, no. Yeah, like, just the basic necessity sometimes is really hard to come by. Yeah. Unless you pack it, you're at the mercy of everybody else. A runner, your, your tour manager who has to deal with his own people. And if you just need water... Sometimes that's the, like impossible to get. Like most recently, and this is true, I, we asked for water on tour with, we were out with Accept, and, and the guy's answer to us was, why? And there was awkward silence, and we're going, did this it's guy a weird just response. ask us why we're asking for water? <laughs> to, to drink it because yeah. I'm made out of it, and I need, I'm losing a lot of it all the time. <laughs> yeah. so you're probably to asking to shower, right? Just, <laughs> you know, we just wanted just to drink some, some water, head. and then you're yeah. like, what is this? Yeah, imagine Sometimes being at a restaurant. Getting the basic that, necessities, yeah. dude, is so hard. Damn. It's so dude, difficult. I so appreciate it. I'm sure everybody will. Like, just hearing these, just the realities of it. And it's not all, you know, yeah, roses and, and, and fairies, whatever. But now, the flip side of yeah, that give, is, give us the flip side. What, what are some of the moments where you're like, oh, yeah, this is why I'm doing this? If you are lucky enough to go out with a national band that has a major reputation and yeah. pretty much has the rock star lifestyle, everything you want and more. 
Yeah. Everything you want and more. And it's a well-organized camp and it's fun and it's easy. There's no fuss, no muss, no stress, no frustration. The job is still the same. The job is still labor intensive. Right. Sure. But all the other mental bullshit that you have to process is no longer there. Yeah. Right. Catering. Oh my God. God, like five star Michelin food. Yeah. Oh, Great. Man. You want some water? They don't ask you why. <laughs> they only say how much. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what I mean? What like, flavor? Right. What flavor? You yeah. know, totally. Just standard water or agua. Con and then you gas. go, can I get water? And they go, you sure you don't want a beer? And you're like, I love you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the flip side is that it can be amazing. Yeah. And you never have to worry. But you're still away from home. Yeah. You still aren't having any retirement or anything put into an account. You still have the same struggles, regardless if it's a shit tour or a good tour. The principle of the matter is that it's all the same. Like, I've had all kinds of stuff happen, but I've also had situations where personalities out there don't necessarily blend really in the music industry? Well together. <laughs> That's surprising. People don't think about that, man. <laughs> I have voluntarily requested to be sent home from a tour. Wow. Because I refused to allow myself to be disrespected by people. I yeah. don't care about it being on my resume. I don't care how big of an artist it was. I don't care. Yeah. I will. I have some a level of self-respect. Good, yeah, man. Yeah, so I, people don't yeah. think about that. Like, that's a, that's a real thing. I straight up asked, can you please send me home? Fuck this place. <laughs> Straight up. And yeah. they sent me home. It's powerful. They sent me right home. Wow. I don't care. I love that. Just call yeah. me unprofessional. I don't care. I it's don't, like, yeah, I don't like think you said, like that respect. Yeah. And like, no, I think that's yeah. the there are ulti- boundaries. That's to you me, know what I mean? the ultimate professionalism is respecting yourself. Like, there yeah, are, there are boundaries. Don't forget to totally. be a human. Right. Having that don't conviction, to it be sounds like you've always had that. Like, just have, early on, just like, you know what you want. You're not afraid to just. And that's why Quit people and, and start over. That's why people sometimes will look at guys who are very, I, not to use the word independent. It's not about that. It's just I know who I am. I know what I want, and I'm out here to treat everybody the best that I can. Pot, leave them better than how I found them, right? Yeah. So if people don't share that same sentiment, now I don't expect anybody to be like me. I don't. But there's a level of common courtesy that should exist amongst all people, right? So some people will look at me as a very difficult challenging guy to be with because there's level of expectations that I make very clear, right? And I don't think enough of us actually actually do that. Yeah. Somebody can disrespect you and you have a choice to make. You can either handle it and make sure they never do it again with dignity and respect, obviously, or you just walk away and don't say anything. Both have positives. Both also have big negatives, Yeah. right? So... For me, I have that military mentality of, if I'm not treating you poorly, don't do that to me. Don't treat me poorly. Because if you do, there's going to be a side of me that you're not necessarily going to like. Right. And it's not because I'm an asshole. It's because you deserved that. Right. You brought that out. Like everybody. (laughs) This is my boundary. And there there will be a very clear and obvious consequence to. But when you get mad, they focus on how much of a jerk you are, but not what they do did to push you to that point right see i'm the guy that reels you back and goes no no you don't get to call me names we get to focus on the action yeah. that made all of this happen in the first place right so now it's you and me against the problem because i don't want to yeah. be against you right. i want to be against that problem well right. you and me against the problem you and me against the problem <laughs> relationship advice straight away yeah. um, it should yeah, never really. be you against your partner it should be both of you against the problem yeah. so you can crush it and move on that's so good yeah, you're, you're just so full of wisdom. I wish we could talk all day. I try, man. I've been through a lot. I've lived yeah. a lot of lives. And <laughs> all I'm doing is necessarily just regurgitating the things that I think will be helpful because it's helped me in the music business. So mm-hmm. if anybody can apply anything from anywhere to the life that they live or the goal that they're going after. I hope it helps. I do. Yeah. Okay. What is something that you believe that other people think is insane? Unicorns. No, I'm kidding. I have no idea. <laughs> what is something that you you had that ready though? <laughs> yeah. Of course. What, what do I believe that other people think is insane? Uh, well, Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb, or anybody in our American history, for that matter. The Egyptians did it. Hmm. Prove huh. me wrong. Hot take. Okay, I love it. What is the book that you've given most as a gift? Who? How to win friends and influence people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a great book, man. Yeah, it is. Carnegie is the freaking man. How to Win Friends and Influence People um, and As You Think actually are the two books that I've given the most. You got to check that one out. Love it. Where do you want people to find you? I don't want people to find me. Leave me alone. No, no, no. (laughs) It's so easy to be found. Literally everywhere. If you ever come to the FDS shop, please don't ask me for the address. Just go to Google Maps. Yeah. It's in there. Okay. It's a business. Love it. It's there. Yeah. Right? FDS. The webpage. Dude, social media. Obviously, social media is the biggest platform ever. Mm. But I keep it simple. I don't do this TikTok and Yeeyock or whatever this thing is that kids are using <laughs> yuck, nowadays. Yuck. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Dude, it's Instagram, Facebook. That's it. Or just call me. Guys, thanks for having me, man. Dude, thank, thank you. This has been really cool. It's yeah, been so awesome. good, as it always is. Yeah. So. Let's get back to the video game, shall we? Thanks for listening to this episode of the National Drummers Podcast. If you liked it, please consider leaving us a review on the Apple Podcast app. Also, check out our new website, NashvilleDrummersPodcast.com. And if you're not already following us on Instagram, you can follow us at Nashville Drummers Podcast. This episode was recorded at Diamond Sound Studios, located in Nashville, Tennessee. Sponsored by Music Lab Nashville. Production by The Wise Company. Thank you for listening, listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. episode.